It's the Monster Hurling final replay between Cork and Waterford, live from Perlis, with the throw in at 7 o'clock. Hello and welcome back to Thurlis for the replay of one of the most prestigious titles in hurling, the Munster Final. Well, of course, last Sunday, Cork and Waterford played out a thriller here. And if I suppose if this evening's game is anything uh, half as good, then we'll all go home happy. I'm joined in studio by Cyril Farrell, Tomás Mackay and Gerald. The late goal from Tony Brown, as we said. Question is, can you come back now and do it this time? Yeah, I suppose that is the big question, Michael. And if you look at it from a Waterford perspective as well, I mean, they were four points up in 10 minutes into the second half as well, and they didn't push home the advantage as well. And likewise with Cork, if you said five points up, 10 minutes to go, yeah, you will push on. We, they got the important goals, and you said, yes, they will push on, maybe go six, go seven points ahead. But that never, never happened. And uh, I think that is credit to, to Waterford as well, the way they were set up that day, their tactics that day. They were probably one over Cork on, on that basis. But their work rate around the field was just incredible, and they didn't panic. These guys are experienced guys. They've been around the scene so many times. Yep. They've seen, we've seen so many late equalizers from Waterford, and that has been kind of embedded in their system, right? They don't give up until the last minute. A lot of question marks about Cork's performance, Michael, in the first half, certainly, and to be maybe slowing up of the ball and the possession, right? Um, the amount of space given to John Milan in front of goal. Um, and then in the second half, particularly, we didn't have major ball winners in the key, the key important areas, which was our half hour line. So that's why their changes have, made, have been made on the team, is that we need to win more ball around the half hour line. You have no Sean O'Gahalpi in this evening, and that has also caused a bit of a change around then in the defence, the defensive setup. Yeah, you're expecting uh, Shane Murphy to go in as cornerback, and Shane O'Neill will be uh, moved from that position out to the wing back position in place of Sean Og. I mean, Sean Og is a big loss, certainly, but I mean, Shane O'Neill is a fine hurler, right? Most people would say that he's probably a better halfback than he is a cornerback, but I mean, over the last two or three years, he was never going to get into that Cork halfback line with the three yeah, that are there yeah. already, so that was the next best position for him. But again, you may be asked the question, right? Okay, you're taking a very experienced guy from cornerback as well, and maybe it shows the strength, overall strength of Cork hurling, where we don't have a straight replacement to go in. In straight in for sure. number seven there for Sean O'Gahalpin, you know, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big move, you know. Despite the fact that Cork were within touching distance of us, Gerlach like Nan, the last day, a lot of people are now fancying Waterford. Well, they are, because I think Waterford played a better hole in the last day. They, they were actually the better team, except that Water, uh, Cork got those circle goals at, at the crucial time in the game. Then Waterford were chasing the game again, but they showed great character, came right back into the game, and I think everybody agrees that Waterford deserved to draw the last day, and now many people are fancying them for the replay. But did we see the real Cork last week? You know, that's the big question that's going to be asked tonight. This is the last chance for Cork, yeah. really. You know, we're going to judge them on the way to play tonight because there are no excuses for Cork tonight. You know, you might say that an easy semi-final against Limerick, it didn't do much good for them. Now that a good game last week, if they're, if, if they're not up to the mark tonight, then I think their All-Ireland aspirations are really over. So that's what's at stake, you know, that's what's at stake tonight. So it's a huge game, not alone for Waterford, but I think it's even bigger for Cork tonight. Ah, sure. Sir Farrell, the last that we were mentioned there a moment ago was a thriller. It was actually a thriller towards the end of the match, and it was a good second half. The first half of the game wasn't particularly good. Will we see a different game here tonight? You will. The first half, Cork played a very short game. Waterford closed down the space, and they had the hook, the block, the stop, and the stop Cork from running up kind of in, into a sack inside. We talked about the changes on the Cork team as Cork come out onto the field here in Curtis. Uh, Waterford also have a change. They have Seamus Prendergast in from the start this time. Yeah, I think he'll go in centre forward. He'll, he'll bring a, bring a lot of strength there, uh, you know, and I, I, you know, probably Malumfi will go in corner. He'll be covering back out. He'll do a lot of work outside there. He'll do the work that Home McGrath was in there the last day to do. Like, the positions anymore, Michael, yeah. and this may be up the middle, you're going to find them changing all over the, over the place. But Prendergast is very experienced, very, very strong in there, you know, and like, Morn will go wing. He's an orthodox web, but he's strong as well. They'll try to upset. If Waterford can stay in the game for the first 20 minutes and close down Cork again, they'll have a right good chance. But Cork will be there to open up Ireland and run up with kind of four or five point lead Ireland if they do, it'll be hard to catch them. By the same token, Tomás, you know, Davy Fitz, I have no doubt, will be sent to Waterford players, and the reality of it is they were losing this match, they were going out, they were losing the Monster final until that last time. I mean, they couldn't have legislated for getting a, a, a goal in the last minute or so, whatever it was, of the game, you know, so they need to up their ante as well. Yeah, no doubt about it, and, and it's interesting, right, the two key positions, maybe the two centre centre positions, right, I mean, number six for Brick Walsh was outstanding for Waterford the last day at number six. Likewise, Ronan Curran for Cork was outstanding as well, right, so you've seen changes there. We, we expect Seamus Prendergast to win on top of Ronan Curran, obviously to deny him that ability that he has to take ball out of the air, win puck outs, Waterford puck outs, and likewise on the other side as well, that you're, you're going to have Cusson in there to be a target for puck outs as well because uh, I like Brick Watch, Brick Watch was very very good in that, in, in that, in, in that Waterford defence and I mean you'd expect maybe a, a different Cork this time round right I mean I, the dirty ball the mm. breaking ball mm. around the middle of the field there wasn't enough hunger there there wasn't enough aggression in their play to win those type of balls mm. and that was there in Waterford and if they don't, have, they don't match that tonight Cork will certainly be in trouble 
OK, time now to hear Claire McNamara. Uh, Dennis, there's been a lot of talk about uh, Sean Oak's hamstring during the week. Is he good to start? Uh, no, he's, he's uh, we've, you know, we'll, we delayed it until the last minute, really, but um, we've tried him out there while he go, but he, he won't make it. So Shane Murphy is coming directly in there, you know. OK. Now, this was a game that you had uh, within your grasp, I suppose, for a spell last week. A huge effort would be required again if you're to win that uh, All-Ireland semi-final place. Yeah, well, I suppose uh, I think the game was we were dead and buried maybe 10 minutes into the second half and then we, create, you know, we, we kind of forced the pace maybe and um, everything went, went right for us for maybe 15, 20 minutes and uh, it looked like we'd hung on, but, um, you know, I, I think probably it was a fair result overall. Davey, here we go again. Uh, have you made any changes to your team from last weekend? Yeah, um, Seamus Prendergast will be in. He'll be starting, so he will. Um, that's the only change we have from the starting lineup last week. Now, you fought your way back into it uh, last Sunday. Um, do you see yourself as in a strong position now ahead of this replay tonight? Yeah, we, we fought at the end all right, but I don't think we probably should have been in that position. We had a lot of possession last week, and for about a 15-minute spell, we give it away. But, clear last week is gone. It doesn't matter. Whatever happened last week is gone. The question we have for the lads this week are to prepare to work as hard, fight as hard, tackle as hard. And um, if we do that, we'll be there thereabouts. Do you think your bench will have a big impact this week? Yeah, I think every bench has an impact, um, so it does, and uh, certainly we're no different. We have a strong panel, but uh, the things I've said to you are the key to what happens today, and um, you don't know about them things they get out in the field. Yeah, David Fitz there, of course, still far. It's, um, it's kind of unusual. Are they going to be able to keep that walk rate up tonight? That's the big question. OK, that's what our panel think about how this game will go, but our reporter Claire McNamara is down pitch side with Jerk Cunningham and Paul Flynn, who might have a different view on proceedings. Yes, Michael, well, we'll wait and see. Jer Cunningham, firstly to you, uh, no Sean Oak for Cork. How much of a loss do you think that will be? Yeah, it's a, it's a big loss, Claire himself and Jerry O'Connor missing. You know, there's a lot of experience now missing from the, from the Cork team with the two lads been missing. So, you know, hopefully, I think the start of the game will be important for him to get into the game straight away to offset the loss of the two lads. Uh, he is a loss, there's no doubt, and also Jerry as well. Now, Cork looked to have it won last week, especially after those two goals went in, but they weren't able to close it out. Yeah, I'd say they'll be disappointed with that, you know, five points up, but, you know, eight or nine minutes to go, they probably would be disappointed they didn't close out the game. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, even, it's even Steven again. It's, that's last week, and hopefully you can put it behind him. Uh, I think, again, I think the, the start of the game is going to be very important to get into the game early. So, Cork or Waterford? Cork by three or four points. OK, Paul Flynn, uh, people are always wondering who has the momentum after a draw. Many people believe it's with Waterford. Well, Claire, I suppose after coming back from the dead, as Jared said there, you know, Waterford people feel that they can go on and maybe, you know, win it today. But, you know, you got to feel that Cork have a little bit more improvement left in them. I think last week their forward line in general didn't function. Uh, their inside line in particular was kind of non-existent. One of their best players this year, Pat Horgan, wasn't in it at all. So, you know, Waterford, while they have probably the momentum coming in, I think Cork have more improvement in them. And Michael Cusson on from the start this time, he'll be a big threat. Big threat is right. Uh, you know, he came on last week and, uh, you know, turned the game in Cork's favour, kind of stayed stationary at centre back when Michael Welch was kind of cleaning up. So, you know, a different threat today for, for Michael to deal with. But, uh, you know, Cousins in himself is a ball winner, but will, will Cork play him or will they play him inside? Niall McCarthy is listed as centre forward. So, you know, it's going to be who knows what's going to happen. Cork or Waterford? Uh, obviously, my heart says Waterford. Uh, obviously, I think if Waterford do, you know, if, I think if Waterford spread it out, they can win. All right, that's the view from the sideline, Michael. Let's go back up to the studio. All right, Claire McNamara, thanks very much. I understand there's going to be a 10-minute delay to the start uh, of this game. Uh, we've just heard that uh, a moment or two ago, so obviously... Sunday's replay, if you talk about evenness and tightness between two counties, we all know it ended 2.15 each. In terms of scoring chances, it was 17 out of 30 each. They all, both had nine wides each. They were level six times. There was not a puck of a ball between Cork and Waterford. Mike. Yeah, and um, you know, really a brilliant second half last week. The first half, I know the hurling wasn't great, but it was great hassling and harrying and tackling, and it was, you know, it was, it was, it was uh, more tactics than anything else. But the second half, it opened up into what we expect between Cork and Waterford. Brilliant hurling, three great goals, uh, dramatic finish. And you know, I, I, just, I, I think there's a lovely atmosphere. I know the crowd is not huge, but there's a nice relaxed atmosphere, and I just expect again to take off from the start. Um, it'll be interesting to think Tomas was saying it there, you know, Jerry O'Connor and Sean Oak out for Cork. A um, couple of lads in, you know, have to get the subs. You know, we know that Watford have uh, plenty of options on their bench, but Cork maybe, you know, if they do need to look for an impact sub, Mike Cousin did a huge job when he came on the last day. And that's become, becoming a bigger part of the game, I think. You need to have these two or three lads to come in to change the course of the game. And I wonder do Cork have them on the bench, but, you know, every game takes on the life of its own, so you know, I'm really looking forward to it. 
Yeah, I have to admit that the um, Clara in County Offaly, Brian Gavin, it's his very first Munster final, and we're up and running. First touch, on cap, down towards Seamus Prendergast. Tussle for possession. Coming forward is John Gardner. Loses possession. Coming through the middle is Richie Foley. Flicks it outside to Owen Kelly. Had a great game the last day. He's continuing on. First score of the replay. It's this man, former <coughs> Mount Zion star, now playing with Passage. Yeah, Marty, um, Richie Foley, lovely pass outside. I, I made that comment coming up to the match last week that 